Live, it's the Bison Football Show. Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. The 2017 season of NDSU football is underway. Electricity was in the air. The game went as expected. NDSU set a record for most points scored in the Division I era, beating Mississippi Valley State 72 to 7 in front of 18,502. We welcome head coach Chris Kleiman to the set. And coach, it's just fun to have the season going, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, electric crowd, uh, great atmosphere in the tailgate lots. We had some recruits out there and then come into the Fargo Dome and it was packed. And uh, uh, it was a great atmosphere and the guys played well. A long fall camp. Uh, these guys wanted some game reps, didn't they? Boy, they really did. Five weeks was a long time, uh, especially for some of those guys that had been uh, like Nate and Nick that hadn't played in a while. And so I was really pleased with the sense of urgency we came out with to start the game. Well, as we roll the tape here, I, I just thought great energy by Bison Nation. The first game, uh, like you mentioned, the tailgate lot was full. Uh, the sound was up, the crowd was into it, and the Delta Devils had to be a little wide-eyed, and their quarterback sure was early as the Bison D was swarming early. They had a little adversity early. They get a big uh, kick return, and then uh, defense does a great job knocking them out of field goal range. There's big Nate right there. Good to see him back out there. I thought he looked really good, too. Now on offense, uh, the quarterback, Reed, Easton off and running. There was a penalty on this play, but this shows you his athleticism. Yeah, a great play by Easton, and uh, he's got a real good speed in the open field, and uh, it was a big play at a critical time for us. Yeah, it flipped the field there, and now they, they lose R.J. Erzendowski, who could be set for a big year. He's looked great in fall camp. He looks great physical-wise, and he just gets loose. Yeah, he really does, and Easton does a good job looking somebody off, and then... Uh, finding RJ and, and it's easier to score when they don't cover them. Yeah, exactly. Seven nothing. Uh, they had three incompletions in a row. They were not moving the ball at all. So we're back on offense here. And Lance Dunn, he, he really looked solid in this game. Uh, Lance is playing with a lot of confidence. He's probably 10 pounds heavier and stronger this year. He's got great feet and vision and uh, I'm looking for a big year out of Lance. Yeah, he does look a little thicker. We're going to see it on this play. You establish things physically early here. Yeah, he does a great job running through contact there and, and gaining the extra yards and uh, he's running with a great attitude. Easton really has some speed. He can catch the edge here, catches the pylon. Does a great job, and, and Darius Shepard does a nice job setting a, just a little bit of a nudge there, uh, allowing Easton to get in. 14 nothing. It's still early, early in the first quarter. They have another three and out. Two plays later, the offense has it. The seize part again for Lance Dunn here, who looked fantastic in the first quarter. Yeah, well, we're getting the offense great field position. The defense, like you said, was going three and out. They weren't putting the ball very, uh, very well, and so we were getting some real short fields. And that's something we talked about all fall camp: is our offense needed to capitalize on short fields. And a quick start was big because Mississippi Valley State was just shell shocked, and you see it right here. They're set up for a punt and just an awful snap, and it ends up being a safety. Yeah, we were coming after this, and I thought uh, Dimitri had a chance at it. And so so I've been interested to see, but uh, it was another way to get two points. And now is the point of the game where you unleash Ty Brooks. Uh, this was a Ty Brooks drive, a nice return, and then he goes for 16 right yeah. away. Ty has great explosiveness, great quickness, and, and uh, vision. He just needs game reps and game experience, but uh, we're excited about uh, his future. Yards after contact for him here, too. Yeah, he's going to play an awful lot of football for us. We have really capable backs and a really good uh, up-front uh, blocking. Once again, they forgot to cover R.J. here, wide open, yeah. made it look easy. <laughs> yeah. was, R.J. won't have an easier one than that one, probably, but uh, we capitalized on it. A 30-point quarter for the Bison. We're still in the first with one defensive play here. I thought the number one D in limited reps was outstanding. Yeah, a great job here by Caleb, and, and it's good to see Nick DeLuca make a big sack there, but uh, I thought our defense played really well. Now we move into the second quarter, so it is 30 to nothing. Ty Brooks again getting carries, his first career touchdown. Yeah, good cut back there, seeing the A-gap power. Great job by the Rams up front blocking, and, and Ty takes it in. Another newcomer in that two deep, James Hendricks, moved from quarterback. Now he's playing safety. He gets an interception here. He does. Does a good job playing the half field. Uh, he's another guy that just needs some game reps, and I thought he tackled really well. I, I'm excited about uh, what we're going to be able with, to do with James throughout, throughout the year. Yeah, he looked really good. Uh, certainly can play the game for sure. Now Ty Brooks, four straight runs. This is the fourth one, and he shows you right tight off the edge there some speed. Yeah, and you're not going to catch Ty. Ty has great ability, great speed, and good quickness on the edge to get us for another touchdown. So it's 44-0. Uh, you're rotating guys in and out. They did hit one play here, though. They do have some speed at some of the skill yeah, spots. They really do, and, and their kids continue to play hard. I'm really impressed with Darren Kelly here, not giving up on the play. 
going yeah. down and making a tackle and uh, good job by Darren but good play by those guys and this was their one touchdown of the day I thought the second quarterback Chris Fowler played okay yeah I think Fowler is probably their best option and uh, he'll probably uh, be the next guy for them but uh, he did a nice job on that play Nodak Insurance Company halftime stats 44-7 NDSU just a great half defensively offensively the rushing numbers they're going to get bigger than that uh, NDSU was off to a historic rushing day before we get to the second half Nick DeLuca on the Gate City Bank hot seat he likes his video games okay Nick what is the most enjoyable thing you did this past summer uh, I'd say go to the lakes enjoy the, enjoy the lakes perfect okay you're from Omaha it's a big town what's something cool about it College World Series, by far. Yeah, I agree. Do you like to text or talk more? Uh, probably a text guy. It's, it's quicker. All right, the fans have a question. If you had to give up movies or video games, what would you give up? Movies, for sure. <laughs> if you were given $10 million today, what would you buy first? Uh, new truck. Like it. What makes a great leader? Uh, I think somebody that's accountable, someone that you know does the right thing on and off the field, and somebody you can look up to. What do you like most about that new locker room? <laughs> oh. Uh, everything. It's just a complete makeover, so I mean, it's from top to bottom, everything's the best. Nice. What does the tradition of Bison football mean to you? Uh, you know, it means culture, you know, pride, uh, play for the guy next to you, and you know, a lot of that stuff, you know, revolves around the team aspect. All right, thanks, Nick. Coach, what was the conversation in the locker room with the backups, who, who they knew were going to get a lot of reps? Yeah, it was their opportunity uh, to show what they could do and to make a statement to us coaches that they need to have more playing time. And um, we're going to count on a lot of these guys as the season goes along. And so we were really challenging those guys to come out and, and with a sense of urgency, and they really did. Let's roll the tape on this, the second half with Mississippi Valley State. And, and some of the starters did get a couple more carries here in the third quarter. Second play of the third quarter, Lance Dunn busted a big one. Yeah, just a great run, great cutback, makes a couple of guys miss, and, and great speed in the uh, open field. And that was good to see out of Lance. So that's a touchdown. It's 51-7 to at this point. And we're going to talk about James Hendricks a little bit, but this shows his ability and instincts. It's a great job of running through contact on the tackle, something that uh, we teach an awful lot of. Coach Klenner and Coach Shep do a good job, and James did it to perfection. Two promising players. Levi Jordan at a great fall camp, and Cole Karch. Yeah, two uh, guys just playing hard, going after the quarterback and get a big sack. Desmond Kane, the transfer, we'll talk a little bit more about him later, uh, gets a flag here, so he did draw a flag. He got a couple of looks. He, he did, and he uh, missed a little bit of camp with the groin. He's back healthy now, and he's going to be a big uh, part of our offense moving forward. First touchdown for both these guys, Cole Davis and Ben Ellison from Holly. Yeah, excited for both guys. Excited for Cole in his fifth year to get the touchdown, and then... Uh, Ben, hopefully one of many more to come. Exactly. 58-7. Ty Brooks again for 12. He was cramping up later, uh, but boy, he just was electric. Yeah, great cuts and great movement by the offensive line. Another big gain. Here's Desmond Kane's only catch of the game. You see some uh, elusiveness here. Yep, absolutely. Trying to make people miss and do something after after the catch, and he does it there. Demaris Purifoy had been making good strides. He gets hurt later, but while he was in the game, he did some good things. Yeah, he ran hard and uh, did a good job following his blocks and made some plays. 65 to 7 at this point. Uh, the bench really exploded. And here's a guy who works really hard on defense coming in. Justice Kelly is his name. Makes a play, and all the guys on the bench were so excited for it. As they should be. Justice works his tail off. He's a, he's a young man that uh, as a redshirt freshman. If he just keeps gaining strength and gaining some weight as a defensive end, he has some ability. We're excited for Justice. So Cole Davis, a uh, completion here. How do you think he played? I thought Cole settled in and played really well and threw the ball uh, exceptionally well, felt more comfortable. He needed those game snaps. This was about the time of the game, too, where Ty Brooks started to cramp up a little bit, but right before that, he gets another 12-yard run. We're moving to the fourth quarter here, and Ty was getting great carries, Purifoy, but Ty, again, uh, gets to the edge on this one. Good blocking. I think Brock Robbins sprung him loose there from Cavalier. Brock's playing really well as, as, as well as Ty. And here's the unfortunate play of the game. Demaris Purifoy uh, get, it gets yeah. what appears to be a serious knee injury right here. And, and like you said, he was making great strides. Good kid, too. Yeah, you just hate to see those things. It's I know it's part of the game, but it just makes you sick to see a young man that works his tail off and, and uh, has that happen to him. Not often a third-string quarterback gets game reps. And not only did Henry Vandellen get game reps, he scored a touchdown. Yeah, good for Henry. Uh, another guy that uh, we've been really pleased with through fall camp. And to get him some snaps was really important to us. 
Well, one of the true freshmen that played, Logan McCormick, gets in on this play. Yeah, good job by uh, Logan pushing the pocket and, and getting a part of that sack. Aaron Mercadell also got some special teams works, and he gets a sack here. Yeah, Merck is a guy we have to count on to be a really good special teams player for us. He's an excellent tackler and uh, excited for him to make a play. All right, the final score, the Bison score 72 points. That's the most ever in the Division I era. The seventh largest rushing total in the history of NDSU football, the most at the Division I level, 498. As we look at the Nodak Insurance Company final stats, 72 to 7. The players were excited after the game. Really excited to get back out there. It was kind of it was a long time coming, so it uh, just felt good to be back and, and you know hitting guys that aren't you know in the green and gold. So that was fun. But yeah, I was I was itching. We had a few three and outs there in a row. I was kind of hoping we. You know, it's always good to get three and outs, but I was trying to play as much as I could there. But. Been a couple penalties, uh, maybe, that uh, we'd like to clean up, but uh, guys stepped up and made plays, and that's important. Uh, offensive line did a really good job rotating a bunch of guys, uh, so guys got action, and, and when they were in there, uh, you know, they displaced people and, and got movement, and uh, guys made plays with the football. I finally got to feel what it was like playing in front of these fans, um, but I just tried to play fast. I mean, I haven't been able to play live football in besides like three times in the spring. So it was finally a lot of fun to go out there and be able to tackle some people and, and see what I can do. Lance obviously had a great day. Uh, so did Bruce. Uh, but Ty's an explosive player. Uh, and his first couple steps are, uh, you know, I think what separates him. And then his ability to make people miss in the open field. And that's something we talk about all the time is when you're in one-on-one -on -one situations, you got to win. And uh, Ty did a great job of that today. Coming off those comments from Easton, this week's NODAC Insurance player of the game is the Fargo kid, Ty Brooks. Had an opportunity to get reps in this game, and he did not disappoint. 199 yards from scrimmage. He had 127 on the ground, caught a pass for 27, had two special teams returns for a solid 45 yards. Coming off the spring and a good fall camp, this was a coming for Ty. He has excelled in practice, and now the proof is there in a game situation. Hopefully it keeps increasing as the weeks go on. Just got to get better pass protection and just learning the offense a little more. Just contribute to the team finally. Uh, it's been on scout team, but now it's in the game, so it just feels good. Well, we talked a little bit about him, Coach, but uh, Ty looks good. He looked good in spring, looked good in fall camp, and, and now we have some game reps here. Yeah, he has the ability to make people miss and make plays in space, and, and he hit it on the head with saying, he had to do it on scout team, but our defensive guys, I tell you, he was the hardest guy to tackle in scout team, and he brought it every day. So uh, for guys like that to go out there and have success, it makes everybody feel good, and, and Ty's earned his reps, and uh, he'll continue to get more. Let's dig a little deeper into James Hendricks. Uh, moved from quarterback to safety. Uh, got a lot of playing time in this game. We'll see some of his plays coming up here, but... It looks like he's understanding the game and uh, has real good football IQ, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. Uh, he made some really good plays. He, you know, it's hard when you're just practicing all the time. You need to be able to do it uh, uh, in live action. And he was able to do that. Tackling was something that we were concerned about. He did a nice job coming in the alley and filling. Um, with us losing Jackson Brown a little bit, it probably elevates him even more with some of his reps to learn a, uh, both safety spots. But uh, I was really pleased with James. There's a good open field tackle in space. And those things just you know continue to help build your confidence. Did he make the transition quicker than you expected? Well, he was a quarterback, so he understood the game. That was the neat thing. And yeah. he, was, you know, he was a good quarterback for us, too. He just didn't want to sit behind uh, Easton and Cole. And so he came to us and said, hey, I'd like to try a position change. And he understands the game of football. Dad's a high school coach. Uh, you can tell he's a coach's kid, does a great job of, of doing film study, uh, really meticulous with his work, with his work ethic and, and making sure he's prepared for games. All right, a couple of uh, true freshmen did play. Logan McCormick played. He's from Kimberly, Wisconsin, a powerful high school program. And Josh Hayes, tell us about these two kids. Yeah, Logan uh, <coughs> played for us as a true freshman. He's done some really good things. He had a, a tough summer with a foot injury, but he's uh, healed from that and back healthy. Uh, with us losing Greg, we needed to play a defensive end. Uh, over the last week, we've really been impressed with Logan, so uh, he'll continue to get those game reps. Josh Hayes, a really special athlete, really good man-to-man -man coverage guy, played an awful lot this second half. We need to have him continue to grow as the season goes along with all the spread offenses we face. But Josh is probably our fastest freshman. You know, we, we talked about the injury to Damaris Purifoy. Uh, there was a couple of others as well. Dylan Radun's had to uh, leave the game. Uh, and also Jackson Brown, you mentioned him a little bit, uh, his injury. He had a knee injury. Dylan's was a knee as well. 
and, and hopefully good news is coming on these guys. Yeah, we'll find out more probably this <clears throat> afternoon. All three were having uh, MRIs. We think DeMars was the most serious of the three, but we don't know on Jackson. We don't know on Dylan. Uh, we're kind of having our fingers crossed that we don't lose any of those three for an extended period of time, but uh, um, we'll find out later on. Yeah, and Dylan uh, has made tremendous strides. Uh, he's a big part of the future. He's a big part of the present, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. Uh, he's you know, our fifth, sixth lineman that's going to play yeah. a ton for us. And it happened early enough that he lost out on a number of repetitions that we really would have liked to have him have yesterday. Uh, so we'll uh, keep our fingers crossed and, crossed and hope that he's ready for next Saturday. No question. Well, still to come, uh, we're going to take a look at that new locker room, courtesy of Olaf Anderson Construction. In our weekly feature story, we're going to have Coach and the players walk us through. It's pretty nice. You want to see it. Welcome back. In this week's Olaf Anderson Construction feature story, the Bison have a new locker room, and it is a great addition to the program. Before the team moved in this fall, we took a tour with Coach Kleiman and some of the players while everything was still a little shiny in there and looking very new. Here's an inside look at the new home in the dome. I think it'll be a big lift and you come in here and it's really bright and, and we can play the music and the music's as loud as you can get it. It's, uh, uh, I'm excited for our guys. They, des they deserve this. They've worked hard and there's a lot of time and effort between amongst a lot of people to get this thing done. Yeah, I think it shows, you know, the hard work and the success we've had in the past and just goes to show we've got to keep getting better and improving and guys are coming here with energized with the new sound system and the new, uh, you know, locker rooms and everything is pretty sweet. All these lockers are, are just tremendously better than, than they were before. So. It's, it's really exciting. It's, it's a cool change. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, this space looks completely different. Um, the lighting and, and the lockers, and um, it just has a completely different vibe to it. It was one of the things that was maybe uh, our biggest eyesore uh, on recruiting trips was coming in and seeing the, the locker room facilities now. Everything's redone. Uh, it emphasizes the conference and national championships. Stuff we talk about, stuff that's been talked about uh, and here for a long time is still up on the walls, the conference championships, national championships, uh, academic All-American, stuff like that. that uh, you know, the, the tradition stuff that's been around for a long time, all of that is here and it's really shown off. 13 national championships uh, that have been done, gone from the 60s all the way up to 2015 and uh, it shows you the commitment to excellence that we have here at NDSU. We're extremely thankful. I think we're, we're pretty spoiled now, um, you know, just getting all this new stuff. It's, it's just a testament to, the, you know, the guys before us and, you know, the, the support we get from this program and everything. And, you know, just seeing uh, everything come together, it's, it's unbelievable. Once a bison, always a bison. And, and all those players want to give back to the program. And, and so for those guys to, to shell out the money uh, for us to have this state-of-the-art facility uh, shows you how important their time was uh, for them at North Dakota State. Coach, what has been the reception from the players as they've been able to move in and use it for about a month now? Uh, they love it. You know, it's state-of-the-art and, uh, you know, has all the bells and whistles we're looking for. We're limited in space, so when you make take yeah. that space and you, and you decorate it and have everything as nice as it is, it's so bright, sound system like they talked about, data ports inside all the... Uh, lockers so they can charge their phones and iPads and stuff. So I I'm excited and can't thank the uh, former players for stepping up and, and helping us with this project. This is a big deal in recruiting too, isn't it? You mentioned it a little bit in the piece right there, but it's kind of an arms race with facilities now and uh, Matt Larson and Todd Phelps yeah. did such a great job to organize the project, but it's a big deal in that regard. Boy, it really is. It's kind of keeping up with the Joneses and staying ahead of yeah. things and everybody knows where the bison are at. They're at the top and everybody's trying to chase us and everybody's trying to get to where we are and part of that is facilities and uh, thank, thankful to, um, to Matt and Todd to help get this project done and we're continuing to do some things. We have a fueling station uh, coming into the uh, uh, locker room here in the next couple weeks. We have a cold tub, warm tub that we're, we're having there now. So all those things are important in recruiting. Well, we start this year's Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison segment with an FBS transfer. We've talked about him a little bit. Desmond Kane comes from the University of Illinois and did play in game one this weekend. Kane caught one ball for 20 yards in his debut. He has quite a resume, had a 100-plus yard game against Ohio State while he was at Illinois. He's from Florida, was the number 11 ranked defensive back prospect from that rich state. He says the Bison program is not unlike what he was seeing in the FBS. You know, these guys are very welcome. Um, they, they tried to tell me what to expect, you know. It's more of the, the guys coaching instead of the coaches coaching us. So it's, everybody's been great to me. You know, I'm just trying to keep up to their pace. Matter of fact, it was like more than what I expected. Um, here, these guys play fast. Our facilities are great. Everything is just like uh, FBS program here. So I'm just I'm just ready to get to play. 
Well, how is Desmond fitting in? Desmond Kane. Uh, really well. A uh, really mature young man. Uh, excited about uh, what he's going to do for us this year. Uh, he's been kind of a sponge to Shep and RJ learning our system, and that's the biggest thing is him feeling comfortable in our system and comfortable with Easton. But uh, I'm looking forward to a big year out of Des. What are his biggest attributes? Uh, give us kind of the uh, scouting report on well, him. Well, he's a great route runner, uh, great after the catch, has exceptional hands, understands the game really well, all the things you look for in a wide receiver. And, and we're, we were looking for more depth and more competition there, and, and uh, he's brought that. And how did you find him? What was his connection? Well, Buda Williams, our defensive end coach, was a graduate assistant at Illinois when yeah. Des was there and, and kind of started the process and the conversation. And uh, uh, he had a number of opportunities and felt like this was his best opportunity. Oh, it's great to have him in the program and uh, hopefully he makes a big impact for us. Well, week two, a big game. Eastern Washington, it's a road game. It's a huge FCS game non-conference-wise. We're going to break it down a little bit. Stay with us. Well, in our Verizon look ahead, it's the Eastern Washington Eagles. The game in Fargo last year was just a shootout. Eastern Washington has a new coaching staff. They lost all those really good receivers. They still have a lot of talent. It's a 3 p.m. Central Standard Time kick. Eastern Washington coach, what do you think? They always have talent. No, oh, it's going to be a great test for us. Uh, I think it's one of the best tests we've had in a non-conference uh, setting, going out there to play on the red turf. I know they're going to have as many people as they can fit in that, and they're going to yep. bring some more bleachers in. Uh, I think offensively, they're as explosive an offense as we're going to face. Uh, you know, they lost a number of receivers, but receivers want to go to Eastern Washington. Yeah. Uh, Gubru, the quarterback's, I, I think, an ex excellent quarterback. And uh, defensively, they have the same defensive coordinator, so the scheme might stay the same. But uh, we're looking forward to a great challenge. Gubru was a great quarterback. Did you leave that game last year? Very impressed with him. Unbelievably impressed with his athleticism. You yeah. know, him getting in and out of the pocket and, and throwing on the run, uh, he caught our attention, and, and I know he has the attention of all of our back seven guys because he really picked us apart in that second half. All right, statewide NBC on television. We'll have the Bison Radio Network fired up for you nationally. It is on ESPN3. It's going to be a great week, big-time game, big win for the Bison in week one. They're 1-0. We'll see you next week, folks. <laughs>